so in this video we're going to learn about a string data type. And the string data type can be used to represent a sequence of characters. And in Python there's really two different ways we can go about denoting a string. One is to use a pair of single quotes and the other is to use a pair of double quotes. So we can say we have the string hello by saying single quote, hello, and then close single quote and hit enter. And this just is showing the representation that Python has. Or we could say double quote, hello, double quote, and hit enter. And you can see that the internal representation still seems to be the, the, single, double, uh, the single quotes. So if we wanted to, we could have longer strings than just hello. We could have multiple words within a string. And we could even have our double quotes appearing within the string itself, as if we had quoted someone. So say we did this. We could do single quote, the alien said, comma, double quote, hello, double quote, and then hit enter. And you can see that this is, in fact, a string. This is perfectly valid uh, string syntax within Python. So we had this uh, open single quote, close single quote, and then within that, we were wanting to quote what the alien said. The alien said hello, and we put that within double quotes, and that's perfectly fine. Now, if we try to do this, where we say double quote, and maybe did the same thing, the alien said, comma, double quote, hello, double quote, and hit enter, then that's a problem. And you can even see the way that did the uh, syntax highlighting here that it looks like that there, that there is a problem. So they have an open double quote and then an, uh, another double quote here. So this is representing a particular string. So we have this string here. And then we have the uh, sequence of characters, H-E-L-L-O, the, the word hello. And then we have an open and closed double quote. So this is actually another string. The problem is, is this hello is existing independent of any type of open double quote, closed double quote. So that's not valid syntax within Python, or at least the way it's interpreting that. It doesn't associate this hello here because we had this open double quote, closed double quote, and then open double quote, closed double quote over here. Uh, so it's not matching it up correctly. Uh, one way we could overcome this, if you did want to, in fact, use these double quotes uh, in all cases, is we can do what's called escaping uh, the double quote. So we are able to escape certain characters. So the double quote character in Python has a special meaning. It's indicating the beginning or the ending of a particular string. But we could do this. We could say double quote and then say the alien said comma and then we could say backslash double quote hello and then we could say backslash double quote and that way, what we're doing here, this backslash is saying that we're escaping the normal representation of the double quote to indicate either the beginning or ending of a string in both of these cases so that we just get a double quote uh, being used within our string. So if we hit enter here, you can see that this is, in fact, valid syntax, even though the representation of it is exactly the same as if we had used single quotes uh, instead of double quotes. But we can do things like that. All right, so all the valid uh, strings that we've typed uh, so far are what we call string literals. Uh, this string, this, this, these two strings here called hello, the alien said hello, and the alien said hello here. So we had four valid strings that we typed in. And we can think of these string literals as being unchanging. So they, you cannot really assign or you cannot assign a value to a string literal. They're just constant, they're just there. But what we can do is assign string literals to variables. So we could say something like this. We could say x assignment statement and then we could say the string literal hello and that way we have hello associated with x. So if I was to hit x here and hit enter you can see that it just returns hello. And maybe I'll do another one. We'll say y assignment statement and then do, then do goodbye. Uh, if I can spell goodbye. And hit, hit enter there and if we do y you can see that it has the value goodbye. Another thing that we can do is join strings together. And the fancy name for that, or the technical name for joining two strings together or connecting two strings together is concatenation, or we concatenate two strings. So we can say this. We can say x, and then I'm going to use the space, even though the space is not actually required, and then the plus symbol, and then y. And it looks like we're saying x plus y, but we should really read that as x being concatenated or joined or connected with y. Because whenever we have this plus operator 
sitting between two string operands, which X holds a string, and Y, or we should say X refers to a string, and Y refers to a string, then we're doing the operation of concatenation. So what really is going on behind the scenes is whenever this uh, plus operator exists between two things, it has to examine what those two things are actually referring to. So if they're referring to maybe integers or, or floating point values, uh, some sort of numerical quantities, and then it actually does a summation or an addition there. But in this case, since we have two strings, X and Y being strings, then it does concatenation, joining those strings together. So if I hit enter here, you can see that it says hello, goodbye, and there's no space there. Uh, if we wanted to, we could say X uh, concatenated with a string literal in which we put a space, and then it's concatenated with Y, and then you could see that we have hello, space, goodbye. The other thing that we could do is assign maybe uh, the concatenation operation to Z. We could say Z assignment statement X plus Y are concatenated with Y. Well, I typed Z, X concatenated with Y and hit enter there. And now if we hit Z or type in Z and press enter, you can see it says hello, goodbye. And then we could do something like this. We could say Z assignment statement Z uh, maybe concatenated with another string literal in which we put exclamation point. And you can see now if we uh, do Z, you can see it has hello, goodbye, and the exclamation point there. Now, one of the things that's, uh, that's really interesting here is that with strings, there are what we call immutable objects. So anytime that we create a string in Python, that particular string cannot be changed. That's what immutability or something being immutable means. We cannot actually change that. And that may seem very strange because you're probably saying, well, we had Z here and we did X concatenated with Y and assigned that to Z, which was hello, goodbye. And then we said Z concatenated with exclamation point. And then whenever we did Z here, it said hello, goodbye, exclamation point. So it looks like we actually changed the string. But we really didn't. So uh, what I want to do now is to show you the logical representation of what happened from these two statements here. Okay, so here's the logical representation of what's going on with several of the statements that we just recently did in the Python interpreter. So whenever we had the string literal hello being assigned to x, what's happening is, is we get the creation of a string object with the character sequence hello. And don't be frightened by this term object. That just simply is the representation for all the data that we have in Python, whether we're dealing with strings, uh, numerical quantities, a list. It really doesn't matter what it is. Everything's represented by an object. And an object has associated with it attributes. In this case, we may have the actual character sequence. And it also has operations that we can perform on objects. So there's a whole list of operations that we can perform on string objects. And we'll cover those in a different video. So what we have is just simply the creation of the string object that has the character sequence hello. X refers to that. So fundamentally, this thing is at some particular memory location. And X just simply holds that memory location. I'm just simplified that by having X uh, pointing to this particular string object. And it's the same thing whenever we did this operation here where we had goodbye assigned to Y. Y is just simply referring to that particular string object that has this character sequence goodbye. And it's the same idea here. So whenever we said Z assignment statement X concatenated with Y, what we really have is just simply Z referring to some string object that was created. And maybe I should have done that part first. So we have the creation of this string object here. And for that string object, we would just have the character sequence. Maybe we should have a single quote there. And we have hello, goodbye, single quote. And Z just simply refers to that. Now, the interesting thing that happens is whenever we do this, whenever we say Z assignment statement, Z concatenated with the exclamation point or the string literal that has the exclamation point. What happens is we don't modify this string object here. We've already said that strings are immutable. That means we don't change them once they're created. What happens is we get a creation of a new string object. So we have a new string object being created. And this new string object will have the original string plus the exclamation point. So it end up with something like this. So we have hello, goodbye, 
and then the exclamation point, and then a single quote. So now what's going to happen is, is we'll update what Z is actually referring to. So this part on the right-hand side of the assignment statement, we get the creation of this string object here out in memory. And then whenever we do the assignment operation, it's just simply changing or updating what this variable Z is actually referring to. So I'm going to update this so that Z is now referring to this guy. So this guy here is basically going to be marked so that it can be reclaimed by what's called Python's automatic garbage collection. So we'll actually reclaim this particular portion of memory. So Z now refers to this particular string object. So that's really what's going on behind the scenes whenever we do statements like this where it looks like we're actually updating some particular string, but we're really not. What we're doing is creating a new string and just changing what a Z, what that variable Z is actually referring to or whatever variable it may be. So let's go back over to the Python interpreter and talk about one more concept and then we'll wrap up this video. So the last thing that I want to discuss is this idea that each character in our strings has a particular position or index. So let's go back to our string X. So with our string X, which had this character sequence hello, each one of these characters has a position or index. So the H is at position 0. So we start counting at 0, and then the E would be at 1, the first L would be at 2, the second L would be at 3, and then the O would be at position 4. So it always turns out that the very last valid index within a string is always one less than the number of characters we have in the string. So in this case, we had five characters, and O would be at position uh, 4. And the really cool thing is, is we have an operation that we can perform on strings. So we could say x open square bracket and specify a particular index. So I'm going to specify the uh, index value of 0, and it will give back the character at that position. So here we had h at position 0. Or we could do this. We could say x open square bracket 4 and hit enter, and you see it that it returned lowercase o. Now, what happens if you specify an index that is not valid? So say we say x, open square bracket, 5. We do, in fact, have five characters, but o is at position 4. So if we did that, we get the string index is out of range. So we need to be careful in terms of what index values we actually supply whenever we're trying to do this type of operation. Now, an interesting thing is, is we can say x open square bracket, negative 1, and you may think, and I think this would be, you know, a good intuitive way to think about things, you may think that negative 1 would just be one character to the left of the H, which doesn't exist, since H is at 0, and we really don't have this idea of a negative 1. But what it actually does is it retrieves this rightmost character. You can think about it, it's just wrapping around is what's really happening is, if we think about uh, H being at position 0, then if we were to move to the, to the left by 1, which would be negative 1, it just wraps around and grabs this O here. That's really what's happening there. So you can imagine that this operation here, let me just go ahead and do it, uh, just simply returns this lowercase O. And if we did uh, X open square bracket minus 2, that it would just simply pick up the L because it's going from position 0, negative 1 would be here, and then negative 2 would be here. So there's the, uh, the L. So that's kind of neat to be able to do that. And I don't know, let me, I'm very curious now. Let's see what happens if you did something like x, open square bracket, and then did minus 6. What happens in that case? Yeah, it does give us an error there. So it doesn't wrap around, I guess, more than once there whenever we start going into the negative values. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this video. A little bit about strings, and we'll have another video. We'll look at, at a lot of the operations, or what we formally call methods, associated with strings. So that's it for this video.